ಸಿಪಿಸಿ <laughs> some question of as i partnership act plaintiff is referred and both the lot would survive and may need your lot some examination on a future if your lot ships are not examining right now the lot ships would be examining whether to uh, sit and devote time on examining right the second round and the last round i can do the persuade your lot ship you not kindly have a look my lord at a judgment reported in 2019 persuade your lot 11 scc have a look my lord page 1 a judgment reported in 2019 Hello, this is the main sabri mala ji page 1 the first five jet bench hello 3 by 3 mala jet bench page 1 the first five jet bench hello 3 by 3 mala jet bench page 1 the first five jet bench hello 3 by 3 mala jet bench well the sir last year na four four five four five well still in the mala this is the original judgment or the reference judgment the judgment. first judgment original judgment. original judgment of five this learned judges my lord judgment or Three, the reference judgment uh, majority judgment. two minority original judgment justice of five deepak mishra my lord justice deepak mishra presided uh, and my lord uh, no no it is 4-1 i'm sorry 4-1 i stand correct that's, uh, that's uh, why i asked whether you were referring no, no, to the referring judgment no 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 my lord it is 4-1 i'm sorry 4-1 just say no malhotra dissenting yes yes no 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 my lord it is 2 on the issue of whether it requires to be referred to a larger yeah yes my lord that my lord justice chandrachud and justice Uh, Nariman Malod the dissent. I, I stand yeah, yes, four one. I am reading the Malod uh, uh, majority judgment. I will also get the copy. I am reading the Malod. I am reading Malod opinion of uh, my Lord Justice Nariman. Just one second, let them pick up. I am reading Malod opinion of my Lord Justice Nariman. Vote it or annexed? Sir, we played a compilation. Is it annexed? it's not an expert we kept it ready we can hand it over you see compilation is giving the compile is it annexed it's not an expert we kept it ready we can hand it over you have a compilation give volume 1 is it annexed it's not only volume we kept it ready we can hand it over you have a compilation give volume 1 is it annexed it's not only volume we kept it ready we can hand it over you have a compilation this daudi wara judgment was cited before the five judge bench in sabri mala so first this daudi wara judgment so was cited 113 of the compilation before the five judge bench in sabri mala first just give me so that i can our pagination tell you 113 of the compilation so can we come to page 120a our pagination 16 para 163 can we come to page 120a 163 my lord 16 para 120 can we come to page 120a 163 page 240 of this compilation was given by my learned friend 163 page 
people are also going by the running page i will not read the whole my lord because it's not necessary for the people are going by the running 163 my lord get i will not read the whole my lord in an illuminating concurring judgment and rajgopala ayangar j upheld the act on the ground that ex communication is not so much a punishment but is really used as a measure of discipline for the maintenance of the integrity of daudi wara community it therefore violates the right to practice religion guarantee under article 251 and 26 in that the in that it interferes with the right of the religious head if die to administer as trustee the property of the denomination so as to exclude ex communicated persons the learned judge however drew a distinction between the two parts of article 252b stating that the expression social welfare and reform could not affect essential part of religious practices as follows but i may skip that part because that's not relevant for the today's purpose it is relevant as finally come to page 164 that part because i'm sorry para 164 as this view is the view of only one learned judge and it does not raise for decision in the present case on suffice it to say that this view will need to be tested in some future case for its validity it is instructive to remember the shirur mot mat in some specifically contained a sentence which stated that there is a further right given to the state mat by article 252b under which the state can legislate for social welfare and reform even though by doing even though by so doing it might interfere with religious practices we then Leave this part of Article 252B to be focused and deliberated upon in some future case. So, my lord, this judgment, which my lord Daudi Bora judgment is upon uh, before your lordship, my lord, it is already held that this may need reconsideration. Therefore, also my lord, if your lordship is so considered, my lord, your lordship may have this is my lord not a list uh, inter se, and therefore, my lord, as an assistance, I can say. either your lot is not in the list but thereafter it went before nine judge i'll come to as an the lot is may say that this can be reconsidered in the nine judge bench where my lot sabri mala reference has ultimately gone or your lot may consider it and your lot is a view ultimately would not be assisting the nine honorable judge may consider lot now my lot i have prepared a note i am not reading the entire note lot now my lot i have prepared a note Mr Sharma you are audible reading the entire note I, I don't mind Mr Sharma being audible but Mr Sharma you are audible reading the entire sometimes Mr Nariman being audible Mr Sharma being audible but Mr Sharma you are audible sometimes Mr Nariman being audible Mr Sharma being audible but Mr Sharma you are audible sometimes Mr Nariman being audible Mr Sharma being audible but Mr Sharma you are audible but please my lord ignore the rest of the judgment but i am not reading it so ignore me not that they are irrelevant but kindly come directly to the rest of the page 13 right side bottom is the page not that they are irrelevant but kindly come directly to the rest of the page 13 right side bottom is the page not that para in 18 kindly come directly to the rest of the page 13 right side bottom is the page not that para in lord only for the purpose of pointing out that by an order dated 10th february 2020 in kantaru raji viru versus young indian lawyers indian young lawyers association the issues referred by five judges were reframed by the bench of nine honorable judges the said issues are quoted here under so this question my lord 26.6 the said issues are quoted here under so this question my lord in in fact my lord the questions are so generic that in answering every question daudi wara judgment will not come for questions are so generic that in answering every question daudi wara judgment will not come for questions are so generic now of, of course the list between the parties may will not survive because of the new act which is enacted and i while appearing for the state i have next one lot that because of the new act also and i while 839 is the act by which the list between the parties will not also and and that's i think broadly the act by which agreement between the parties the parties will not also But if the Lord Chief Lord considers it proper, the Lord Chief may examine this. Or second option can be the Lord Chief may specifically say proper. This answer, this reference, need not be answered. 
because the judgment in Daudi Vora and the dictum laid down can always be reconsidered before a ninth. The judgment in Daudi Vora and the dictum laid down. Mr. Bhatnagar had some some uh, caveats to it. According to uh, his submission, even after uh, the, the his submission, abolition of the relevant provision, he last time also flagged the issue of the relevant that, uh, will the power of excommunication is being given up or not, to which Mr. Nariman said he would not like to make any statement on that issue. Uh, all he is saying is that the offending provision would not land obliterated from the statute. That is, what the offending provision would not land Therefore, to him that aspect remains. So, the uh, question will be whether that as paper to him that acceded here. So is it something uh, which is required required to be referred along with the larger bank Vimala itself? Is it something that can be the third option? Required, I think better option. Along that is also another option. Yes, yes, I, in my respectful be submission, third better option. Better option. Other is to frame this issue uh, in view of obliteration which has taken place, but then refer it to a uh, to be heard along with the Sabrimala. But I'm that just debating, thinking aloud. Correct. That we in my submission, the, the issue between my learned friend and yeah, my learned friend are interse. I have nothing in my submission, but the third option, my lord, which your lordship, my lord, suggested, may, in my respectful submission, may be a better option. The third option, substantively, the list doesn't survive. It's correct in terms of that. But still, some part of it, in view of the question he has flagged. Otherwise, also yes, question of law would still be answered. Question of no, law. Question of law. Suppose the question of law was only on the validity of this provision, Correct. then the obliteration of that uh, provision would not may not require answer at all because the substratum is gone. Look, this right. is what we put to Mr. Batangar, but he said, "Well, yes, substratum is gone, but some part of that substratum is left." But my lord, therefore, that, that provision was Malod dealt with in the context of Article 25.2b. Hmm. So that interpretation of the judgment, Malod, dehors the parties then may perhaps survive. No, I am saying only that if it was only us, only that provision which was in question, maybe the question need not have been answered. Correct. So you are right that it doesn't get, uh, the obliteration of the provision doesn't take away the question, but uh, it may not be required to be answered. But he seeks to raise something which is beyond uh, beyond merely the obliteration by pointing out the reliefs last time I remember Good. and saying that uh, either it has to be answered, uh, either they have to give a statement or it has to be answered or it has to be referred to a yeah. to be heard along with Sabrimala. Precisely. So among the three options, the, the option Narman had already ruled out the option of making any more statements than what is there. So that option is over. So I think the option before us is only this, that do we answer this question here? Is it appropriate to answer this question here? The limited issue which now remains? Or whether we should refer it to... It means the to be heard. The, it, Lord, that Can may it, perhaps the, the Lord, may be a better option subject to your Lordship's final call. Because... Give me those three cases where repeal is done. Huh? Sharma, Mr. Sharma, Mr. Sharma, yes, Mr. Sharma. Can you hear me, Mr. Sharma? You will have to. What you mutually discuss is coming to us. I'm not. Uh, therefore, it may I'm, not be. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my lord. I'm sorry. Yes. It may not be advisable for your strategy to get your discussions this side. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Yeah, very no, no, not at all. Just point out this part of technology issues which crop up. Yes. No, what I'm saying is, uh, even if you are required to reconsider it, it will end up in.
One more, my lord. Uh, just by way of an assistance, uh, lord, reconsideration of Daudi Bora. Well, Daudi Bora is a learned five judge bench judgment. May perhaps not be possible, my lord, in this combination. Shirur Mat that is, is that also issue arises whether so. Just thinking aloud, what is happening is in either situation. Uh, they say the power of excommunication is something which has to be examined. One. So, if we look at uh, the questions of law, we answered to which frame which you read out. They are um, broad, comprehensive, comprehensive enough to possibly cover this issue. Yes, they are broad, generic proposition. proposition. But if they are not before the larger bench, then the problem may be in its nuance in which it is being urged here. Um, it may not be possible. Uh, or it may, let me say it may be possible that it may not be answered in those terms in terms of this nuance. Correct. So, therefore, both for the reasons that Daudi Bora is five judgment and the point they have raised and the reference made may require um, thinking aloud, may require them to be there to raise this particular limited issue to be answered. In the context of Article 25, which is a generic question free. Yes, yes. 
Yes, Mr. Patel. You know, you know, uh, firstly, I think I I really can't say that the questions that have been framed in a generic way and referred to nine judges would have no bearing on this case because after all, Article 25 and 26 surely arise in this case. And if your lordship gives me the opportunity, I'll develop it on today or whenever uh, as to how you know, they arise in this case. Now, Lord, what in this case has happened is that as the learned solicitor pointed out, three judgments were delivered by the five judge bench. The majority of three said, my Lord, that this practice is an essential religious practice, number one. Number two, it does not fall within Article 25 2B, and therefore it is not the Act itself, the 49 Act, is not protected as a social welfare reform legislation. Point number, that's what the majority said. The concurrence said that even if it falls with it. It cannot possibly fall under 25.2 because no essential religious practice can come under 25.2b because it will obliterate the religion itself. That is the concurrence. And the dissent, which I believe you not know, certainly subsequently has found resonance not, not in explicit terms, but certainly in terms of development of the law and further judgments of your lordship has touched upon various issues of excommunication and a very important issue of Article 17, whether untouchability is a limited uh, article, uh, a limited right, or a much broader right, as the Constituent Assembly debates indicate. So these are the very important questions that arise in this case. But at the heart of it is the practice of excommunication. That is the substratum of the case. Now, my lord, even if you look at the 2016 Act, which is coming, which it was said makes this matter moot. There also it says that a community will not boycott somebody. But if I'm not part of the community after being excommunicated, that act ex facie will not apply to me. So I'll show that provision. In fact, it's annexed. Please have a look at it. At the, at the learned solicitor's note has it. So, my lord, the issue therefore of excommunication certainly arises. If I may just turn, uh, invite your lordship's attention to my lord, the act which has been placed on record <laughs> at my lord, page number, annexure B at page 39. Thanks. And Act 41 is the provision which bars social boycott just as the 49 Act had barred excommunication. Mr. Bhatnagar, the difficulty would be this Act is not under challenge before us. Correct. Correct. Absolutely, it's not before challenge. So, we cannot go into the validity of that Act per se. I'm not inviting you. I'm, just, I'm only uh, referring to my argument of the practice. I'm not saying that the... I'm, I'm in fact saying... I'm very sorry not to interrupt you. Uh, what I'm no, saying, I'm... the act does the the argument will be that the act does not apply to a person who is excommunicated. Therefore, I, I can't challenge the act. But in any case, this act prohibits social boycott of people within the community. If the practice of excommunication is upheld, then I'm not part of the community, and therefore the act does not apply to me. If, as I say, the practice is abhorrent to the constitution. And certainly, my lord, that's that's going to be my argument, and for your lordship's consideration, then of course different considerations will follow. Should we go on the hypothetical basis? The uh, act will be challenged, then it will be. No, no, no. I'm not on the act at all. Please keep the act out of it. Is what I'm saying. I'm saying it's please only focus, sorry. and my focus is only on the practice, and what the five judge benches said. I also, as I said, my lord, it will. Uh, do I understand you correctly? Yes. You are saying that you are not required to assail the provisions of the Act. That's what I'm saying. In terms of your reading of the Act. Yes. But there is an element of insistence of continuation of the excommunication practice yes. by the head of the community. My Lord. Which is, uh, according to your submission, abhorrent to the Constitution provision. This is precisely my submission. And, and just to add one line, and it is not a protected practice under 25 and 26. Yes. And now, uh, and and uh, in a sense, the new act doesn't uh, permit it. The new act doesn't permit. According to me, the new act would have no bearing on it. Because if the practice is upheld, then I am anyway out. So, uh, but as I said to your lordship, I, I cannot possibly say that the generic questions that have found their way referred to nine judges will have no bearing. After all, there's a question of constitutional morality. Yeah, but uh, one option was to um, await that view and then take up this issue but then honestly my concern is only that it may deprive you of the opportunity of uh, bringing this nuance and suppose uh, as and when that question is answered suppose this aspect is not answered we will be back to square one we will be back to the square one. specific we will be debating whether 
Uh, yes. This practice is there or not, and then coming to a conclusion whether again it requires to be referred to a larger bank yes. because it's a five digit bank. Yes, that's the uh, issue which will arise. You know, one other issue that I must flag now before your lordship because I'm just assisting your lordship is whether your lordships can directly refer it to nine. There, my lord, may I just cite one para from the reference order in this very case. Because we said it should be before seven judges, but a five judge bench said, no, you first must go before a five judge bench, and only if they agree with your submission, at least prime of AC, then it can go to seven. So the option, according to me, what this judgment says is. See, that will be uh, ultimately that's a call the Chief Justice can take. That's exactly correct. That's what I was we, saying. We will, say, we will only say that the questions framed in the nine judges bench, if we agree with you in that sense, yes. would have a bearing on the question framed here. Right. So. Therefore, the option is uh, either to refer it to a larger mail or uh, which may be seven judges or nine judges depending on the chief's prerogative, but that the, uh, the, the generic questions framed in, uh, in the Nainjala matter would have uh, a bearing in a particular nuance in this case. <laughs> Except that my specific question is not referred also, as your Lord very That's rightly pointed out. I am saying in that nuance it is not referred. Yes. And so, as my lord very so, rightly okay, said, it's very possible that we'll be back to square one. So, therefore, we would have to frame that question in that nuance and say that this is the question according to which needs to be answered. That's right. The single question now. Single question, whichever way you're Only one thing the option of referring to the last seven judge bench, seven honorable judges, my lord, was available in the review also in Shabri Mala. But the court chose to refer it to a nine judge bench because Shirur Math is seven. So, and that also falls for consideration. That's right. That's why it went from five to nine. Uh, my Lord, may I also submit? Yes, yeah, just. just. <coughs> Which is tagged along, my lord. Less in my case is present, my lord, because my lord, I filed, I was excommunicated on the ground that I had participated in my lord before the marriage of a person of uh, my sister in law, my lord, and then my lord, I got excommunicated from a caste association. This caste association, my lord, is of 27 villages in the region of Kutch, my lord. So, therefore, my lord, once I file a complaint under this act, summons were issued, but the Honorable High Court, uh, my lord, quashed the summons on the ground that because in the Saifuddin judgment, this the entire act has been held to be void, therefore, my um, those summons were quashed, my lord. So, therefore, even under the new act, my lord, the process will not revive. Yes, sir, my lord. It's not allowed. Just to add one thing, my lord. We don't say that the list doesn't survive in our case. According to us, the list very much survives. Of course, subject to the question that you're not sure. No, there are two parts. Uh, substantively, the list, Mr. Patanga, doesn't survive actually. It's simply excommunication uh, practice. No, no, but if the provision, one is the challenge to the provision. You are saying it doesn't lay down the correct law, this, this provision. Ah, right. The, the uh, amendment provision takes away that offending, uh, according to you, what is an offending provision is taken away. But you say that despite no. that, despite no. that offending provision being taken away, the list square, the practice of excommunication still subsists. Yes, that, my, my point is only that the list square excommunication subsists. Yes, the act is gone in any case. So now, yes, yes, Mr. Nariman, we would like to. Uh, may it please you, uh, Chief. My Lord, I am very much obliged uh, for this opportunity to address you, my Lord, I'm very, I would have uh, really been delighted if I was there physically, but uh, my Lord, there are all sorts of constraints, otherwise I would have uh, not. Uh, I, I, we would also have liked you to be present here, but then. No, it's only because of your indulgence that you are, my Lord, able something to. Is, uh, something is something is better than nothing. <laughs> my Lord, the, the point that the soli learned solicitor has raised, my Lord, is important. I'm not saying it's not important. The <laughs> questions that have been framed are also important because they would have a bearing ultimately on something to be decided in this case affecting the Sanayana judgment. There's no doubt about it. it. It would be so. But the point only is, my lord, today you have you have a writ petition of 1986. 
between a particular the state, which is now redundant because the state was to support the act, but the act is repealed, and a private individual. Now, a lot a catena of decisions have said that such a writ petition is not maintainable at all. Now, whether you decide it now, you decide it later, you decide it after nine judges, but at some point of time, that decision will have to be done in a pending matter because that is the only matter before you containing a whole bundle of facts, a whole set of denials, lot of affidavits, which I'm not bothering you with. Therefore, my Lord, the question certainly can be referred, but nothing survives today in this petition. And that's for your consideration. Because although the act is repealed, the question of my right to excommunicate and the challenge to that survives does not enable the present rate petitioner to move under 32. That's that's for your lordship consideration. There are judgments of your lordship specifically saying between private parties there cannot be an enforcement of the rate. Now that's one of the considerations. Whether you take it up now, whether you take, I'm not even not at the moment trying to uh, short circuit anything. But take it up now, take it up later. But that question does arise, and it will arise later. And there is there is one solution to this, perhaps, following what the solicitor says, namely, in the Sabrimala case, it was contended by before one of the dissenting judges, my Lord Justice Chandrachur. Just as Mr. Nariman dissented, Justice Chandrachur also dissented. And the justice, uh, the, that the Sayana case should also be deferred. And his lordship said, if your lordship turns to the, the Sabrimala judgment in at page 180, para 272, 2019, 11 SCC. If you've got it with you, my lord. Para 272 you are mentioning? I'm obliged, my lord, at 180. This is the... The other dissent of um, oh, Honorable Justice Chandra Chodhu. And this, this said, my Lord, after discussing it at the it. bottom, just this, before 273. This yes, is concurring. In Saifuddin, he calls it Saifuddin. This is a Sayedna case. Is presently pending consideration before a larger bench. That is your Lordship. Yes. Because this comes subsequent to the five judge bench judgment, my lord, which said that if you are convinced that the law laid down is wrong, then you refer it to Salam. Mm -hmm. Lord is judgment. <laughs> so, my lord, quite frankly, this was all considered mm. by the judges. It's not as if it's only that it happens to be the other dissenting judge refers to it. But uh, in, in this opinion, Mr. Nariman, uh, Justice Chanakir's view was the yeah, you view. was just yeah, same as Justice Nariman. So it was the it was the majority view. In this one, it's the majority. Yes, 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 yes it was the majority view. Same as Justice ah. Nariman and same as Justice Chief Justice Deepak Mishra. Concurring uh, majority view. This is the concurring yes. majority view. Four is to one, which went. Four is yeah, absolutely correct. It's only uh, Honorable Justice Indu Malhotra who took the dissenting view. Which ultimately Justice Gogoi Malo thought was a correct view, and ultimately uh, all those questions are yes. So there is no doubt these questions, the, the, the questions as framed by the nine judge bench, I can't get away from it. it. It requires to be considered, and it will possibly be considered in God's good, good time. But uh, but today, my Lord, we, what are we? We are faced with this problem. There's no question of referring anything. So I, 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 uh, Mr. Nariman, I would, uh, we would like to have your response to uh, a view canvas that um, uh, since that uh, nine judges judgment is awaited, instead yeah. of awaiting that, if on this practice of excommunication, a question is framed and also referred, the parties will have the opportunity to assist the nine judges bench in respect of this particular nuance of the larger generic questions framed as the first two questions? Well, it, I don't think that would be a proper way of doing it, if your lordships don't mind. 
my no, saying, no, I, I'm, I'm seeking your uh, assistance and opinion as to what you feel about. Yes, I'm very much obliged. No, you know, this matter comes because of Justice Lawati's judgment. Yes. Because in, in Sabri Mala, this was contended. <coughs> and Justice Chandra should say, no, no, this is now before and five judge bench, let them de decide whatever they want to do. And your lordships are now deciding whether what to do. And my suggestion, my lord, following the suggestion I made, which I, I consider my lord, quite reasonable of the solicitor, apart from the lists, etc., that just let this, my lord, stand over till the decision in the nine judge bench, because all those questions, this question has to arise. There's no question of now framing another question and okay. referring it again. Okay. Because that occasion doesn't arise. And anything else, anything else, Mr. Nariman? I'm sorry. I said anything else you would like to say? I yes, I'm sorry. I, I, I would like to only say this, that as early as possible, a nine judge bench should determine those questions because they are all pending. No one can you know, again say that the nine judge bench has dissolved. It's not dissolved. The, the five of the judges have retired, etc. But that makes no difference. Then there is a there is an order of the nine judge bench framing questions. So either they have to be answered, or you know, something has to be done about it. Now, and, and I have no doubt that the answer to that question will certainly help this honourable bench to determine the correct view to be taken on uh, uh, excommunication. There's no doubt, because you just see the questions. They are all the questions two and four. Yes, yes, yes they have a large general question, but uh, Nariman, on the lighter side, this is not in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just to, you know, the matter was, in fact, the nine judge bench was listed for one week of continuous hearing in 2020 March. Yeah, then, but then COVID intervened. Then, otherwise, it, it was, was only set for a day. So, but unfortunately, because of that, but initially but, the uh, initially that flu <coughs> intervened. Swine flu. Swine flu intervened. Two honourable judges comprising of the bench were infected. Yes, yes. And thereafter, immediately COVID. Set. Two of us have gone through it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then, when we have never seen the light of day. But my yeah. Lord, we are also, we would also like to, like this question to be decided at the earliest. There's no doubt about it. Understand. Therefore, I suggest, my Lord, that at the moment, if it is convenient, without raising any preliminary points, which I have, I'm not raising them at the moment. Let all of this be decided after the nine judge bench formulates its answers to the questions. That's enough. Whether it decides the review in a one way or not, it makes no difference. Oh, okay. Thank just you. One, no, just may I have two minutes. Yes, yes, just one second. Just two minutes. I gave you a chance. Now, what do you want to say in no, something? Lord, there is one issue or one question which even ah, nine. About my nine learned friend, just... sorry, my lord, to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt you. My, lord, my learned friend was just arguing. You know, he is not, not connected with the Dowdy Boras. It's another community from, that, Gujarat. from Gujarat. That's a different community, my lord. I started with that. My lord, the moot question is. That in this, uh, can an individual, maybe head of any community, can he exercise sovereign powers of judiciary? Whether sovereignty would be the basic structure of constitution. Sorry, sorry, I'm not getting it. How does sovereignty uh, come into it in uh, in power of excommunication? The constitution doesn't permit us to excommunicate anybody. So there is no. Exactly, my lord. But, my lord, point, my lord. So therefore, uh, see, ultimately the same thing is not, uh, let's not expand it to what you are saying. The simple issue is whether there can be an exercise of power of excommunication and Mr. Bhatnagar said that's all. And he seeks to test it on a constitutional uh, provision. Now he says that, uh, frame this question and refer to a nine judges bench. Mr. Nariman says, no, let us see the answers to the nine judges uh, bench and then take up this matter. That's the... Uh, between the two on the submission. Because, because, may I just add to what? Because, we'll hear you, don't worry. Because, we have all the time, there's no discussion. <laughs> I don't want to include because, that. Milord, oh, very short. As short. far as in the Daudi Bora case, as well as in my case, the excommunicator does not seek power from 25 and 26. They are seeking sovereignty, Milord, in Daudi Bora case from Allah 
and malod in my case it is from canonical text malod of the hindu religion malod so the point is one on one hand there is a religious sovereignty coming from god and on the other hand malods are sitting here malod uh have exercising sovereignty under the constitution so can there be malod parallel courts in fact malod there was a judgment where malod uh the issue of fatwa was considered by this honorable court malod in the division bench there malod they said that it can uh this uh issue of uh, the fatwa the nature of fatwa can only be not recommendatory a conciliatory exercise but the cannot be a prohibitive exercise yes not it cannot uh, the list uh, the basically in this case they say that civil rights vis a vis 25 26 but civil rights has to be decided by a court of law so civil rights can't be decided by individual law uh, thank you Yes. Sir, just a, a moment, Milad. The reason why the cause suggested by Mr. Nariman may be the correct one. There is another reason. Your lordships recall Justice Lahotri's judgment sitting in Constitution Bench is that your lordships will decide to refer to a larger bench only if your lordships are first satisfied that the law decided in the 1962 judgment was not correct. Now, the very argument of my learned friends that these issues arise before the nine-judge bench. itself shows that as of now there is no law decided over larger bench that is contrary to the 1962 judgment today the 1962 judgment we are in a position to show is still good law it may be that because of the width of the issues before the sabrimala bench some decision may be taken before that bench which as a bearing ultimately so nariman said to correct. the extent is obvious that it is bound to have an effect it yes that's right it can't be that it will not have any it's effect. a wider question is right in this question because Absolutely. the question is very generic and wide in its terms so i don't think we can say that it will have no impact no it, it will is, therefore no that's right the question is only whether to withhold the matter as mr nariman says or refer it to the same no i i sorry i i i put it wrongly malot what i meant was that the decision in sabrimala may end up showing that the law decided in 62 was correct also we have not put it wrongly and we have understood it all correct yes. no therefore today today the issue is whether this writ petition should be referred to the nine judges bench but i don't believe so for several reasons which we have said writ petition as a whole cannot be referred correct only cannot be so only the question only question would be whether this question uh, his his argument seems to be which i endeavored to rephrase was that let me have a chance before the nine judges bench to address on this limited issue because that may have a direct impact on what you is taken in this case and, and that the only and thing. that may not he can always seek intervention before the nine judges so otherwise every such matter will go before them or they'll have a pile of matters understand right. and uh, that, that is the short point the bulkiness of the problem which props up can i just yeah, address your lordships only for a few minutes you are for whom mr tripathi i'm not supporting what mr nariman is saying I'm also supporting what my friend is saying. I won't. You're also supporting Mr. Patnagar. All three. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> on, on different causes, yes. <laughs> For different causes, yes, bro. Now, bro, I make the respectful submission. I'll be very brief. Point number one, bro, that the issue is there before the nine judge bench. All the parties here, there are some interveners, etc., and the writ petitioner have all been included, bro, there. so they are present before the nine judge bench so it is not that their voices are not going to be heard that's very important that's point number 1 point number 2 my lord is that this present writ petition is a writ petition of 1986 amendment is sought in 2016 the act comes in 2017 the act is brought in the written submissions filed in 2022 so this is the 2017 act Is not the subject matter really of this? Mr. Tapati, if you saw, we put Mr. My brother put it before to him. He says, "I am not challenging the new provision, the new act." That's yeah. right. But but not the point is that that uh, there is no issue on that. Lot. I, I was. I heard brother. But but not therefore the position as it stands today is that the act has gone. It has been repealed. The repeal has not been challenged by them. They are, they have not even mentioned the new act. But if whether i am captured by the new act or not will have to be an adjudication done in my respectful submission in an appropriate proceeding by the high court for this reason my lord that i have supposing there is an adverse view if it goes via the high court there is a writ petition here 
Because if it goes via the High Court, I still have the right, Manas, to come up before my lord. That was the point which was dealt with in the Antule case. That Manas, primary adjudication... Party, party. You are right in some fundamental, but the fact that this 32 petition has awaited a decision from 1986... That is true, Malas. ...also troubles us. I, I see that. But Malas... I'm not blaming anybody for it, but... No, no, I, I quite see that. Malas, as as yeah. part of my law, as being my law's officer, absolutely. But yeah, kindly see... institution, it troubles us. No, I, I see that. I, 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 Lordship is right. I'm at one, Malas, and I'm, I'm really sorry for that. But please see this. From 86 till now, no early hearing ever moved. Nothing. They put in an 86 petition and Malas, keep it, Malas, it's, it's as if it's a dump of biryani, pardon my expression. You just put it there and wait for it to simmer. Then 2016, they come up, my lord, with an amendment. 2017, the act has come, there is nothing. So, Malas, they are also not entirely not amiss. May I put it like this? Therefore, my respectful submission is, please refer this. And they are all, all of us will be there, Malas, we are all there in the nine judgment. Somebody may enjoy the biryani, somebody may not. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Can I, can I just respond? Therefore, Malach. Okay, don't tell it. Some of the places in between. Nineteen forty nine Act, which was struck down by a judgment, which act has been repealed. There is only one prayer, my lord, in the writ petition. And the prayer is that please declare that the judgment is wrong. Now, my lord. What is the impact of the judgment in the 2017 Malab's Act is not even being contended by them. That has to be decided at some stage. Therefore, this writ as it is filed, Malab, is completely non-maintainable. After the amendment, what is the effect of the affair? That, that's right, Malab. So, after the new Act comes in, what is the effect of the judgment on the new Act? I'm saying the, you said 2016, they amended the petition. Yes, Malaz, in amendment, they added some more Malaz's uh, description and Malaz's contentions relating to what is meant by excommunication and bara. And Malaz, that is the sum total of the amendment. In the relief, there is no... Uh, there, Malaz, please see the relief at Malaz page 59. The amendment is not yet allowed. It's only the amendment is not, my friend is right, amendment is not even allowed. Amendment was not allowed because the matter never came no, up. No, they, they never moved. They never moved. Mr. Badi, you can't say that they never moved. They never moved. That's something I'm going to accept. Well, they never moved. I'm going to give a short rejoinder to all these. Just give it to me. Yeah, let me just finish. Yes, yes. Let me finish. Well, that's not something which... Uh, frankly, appeals. We keep the matter pending. We can't penalize other people for keeping the matter. Well, well may I, then may I make the second submission? No? The the prayer Malad, in the writ, because Malad, the writ has to be taken as a whole. I'm saying what is the prayer I, that we've seen. I'm saying what is prayer. the prayer made in the amendment? Amendment prayer is Malad, petitioner, Malad, the grounds are given 
as to what is the effect of barat and excommunication with the prayer. Pati, what is the prayer? Yes, the prayer is belonging. Give the prayer. Declare the practice of barat excommunication, excommunication for reasons connected and unconnected with observance of religious tenets to be unconstitutional. So they have raised it in the amendment. You are right that amendment has technically not been allowed. But uh, Malad, they have not dealt with it in the context of 2017 Act. That you are right. Therefore, Malad, that that is the issue today. Does the 2000? What is the effect of this excommunication no. on, by in the 2017 Act? That issue is not at large before my lord. Okay. And and lastly, my lord, one last submission, uh, which my lord that I also mentioned, and I am respectfully say that normally your lordships will be persuaded to refer a matter even to nine judges if my lord is prima facie satisfied <laughs> that the judgment in question requires reconsideration. But lord, all I am saying is, please await the judgment of nine judges. That's the same prayer you are joining yeah. the prayer of Mr. Right. Uh, Narimo. No. Narimo. Because yeah. you are very adroitly says, please don't examine this and please refer it to sub silent to a larger bench. That my friend can't say. He has to show that the judgment okay. is I'm patiently that. wrong, it requires reconsideration. I am showing that. Now, my lord, I'm if sure. your lordship would kindly see, when the 2005 five judge bench headed by Chief Justice Lahoti took up the matter, there was no reference to a nine judge bench on certain framed questions pending then as they, as it is today. In fact, there was no reference pending at all on any question. Today, we have at least some generic questions referred. So, there is a complete sea change between what happened in 2005 and what is the position today. That's point number one. Point number two, my lord, so far as this judgment and its correctness, etc. is concerned, two judges in the majority in Sabrimala, two judgments, I should say, in the majority in Sabrimala have expressly referred to what was held in this case, what the issues were in this case, and how it is pending consideration. So, at least two judgments, two honorable judges, that is to say, Justice Nariman and Justice Chandrachu took the view that these issues are pending and required to be decided. Now, my lord, in my case, the specific issue of excommunication will not be dealt with by nine judges unless, my lord, the question is framed. Because otherwise, we will only be looking at questions whether Shirur Mat was rightly decided on essential religious practice, whether 26B is subject to 25-2B, etc., etc. These will be the questions. What is the scope of constitutional morality? Now, here, the other questions that arise, which are specific to, to this case, if, my lord, your lordships are pleased to refer the excommunication practices constitutionality, would also be Article 17, which the dissent of Justice Sinha has clearly dealt with. Whether Article 17 would apply across the board, or it would only be a caste-based uh, disability or ability. So, these, that is the reason why you know, I am requesting your Lordship, beseeching your Lordship, that this particular just one issue, you know, this petition can be kept pending and disposed of at a subsequent date is no problem. But this one particular issue on whether the practice of Bharat or excommunication is constitutional or not, is something that your Lordship would consider referring. So, but I have one question. Other than that, what is in this matter? Other, yeah, but that is the whole issue. Lord. When you say, huh. uh, keep the other issues pending this, no, uh, no. I mean, the, according to you, this is the only issue. Uh, the issue. only issue which and the consequences of this practice which we also raised. But the main issue is this one. Not Absolutely. Right. Yes. Sir. On the take down on the main petition and the application amendment has. Uh, the constructors of the arguments in court from our orders result. We'll examine it in. I'm grateful. Immensely Please, grateful. Grateful. Very grateful. grateful. Thank you, Mr. Narayan. Thank you, my lord. Your lordships are reserving orders. We are reserving orders. I am very much obliged. Lordship, please. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. 
So, Atani, we can welcome you on your first appearance. <laughs> I, I wish to convey to your lordships that the government is very keen to pursue this matter. I have applied my mind uh, on the review, review judgment and to various other challenges involved in reopening this matter. But having regard to the concern of the government that we cannot abandon the victims, because the tragedy is unfolding almost every day. So, I would take a little time. I would have probably placed before the court my brief note of issues, but for want of time, which I could not do. But I'm sure that we'll be able to assist the court on this very, very challenging case where more than one aspect of the matter may have to be unraveled for the first time. So I've also looked into examples elsewhere, both in case of opening settlements and also mass starts, et cetera. We have a considerable literature and courts have gone into beyond the settlement arena. So I think I'll place all that material before the court, uh, whenever the court assembles again. But before that, I propose to share with the court my brief note of issues I thought can be gone into by the court. The law may go through it through circulation in not assembled in the court. At a later point of time, by the time we would have assembled all our materials, our convenience volumes and compilation of judgments, etc. We have a rich bibliography available on these issues. So I will take a little so, time. Uh, the government, you have to take a stand whether you are proceeding, you are saying we are proceeding. And, uh, but you don't want to proceed today, it appears. Today, it's, today it's, it's only for direction. The lawyers wanted to know whether the government is keen mm. to pursue this matter. I think, yes. How much time do you need for to see one? If you want, uh, if you are proceeding with it, then you must have a separate. We don't want to take the whole record. You I, I understand. A separate compilation. You must make a. We will do that. We will. We will. We will only look. Only look at the convenience compilation. We, we will have a dedicated team for having that. From both sides. From both sides, you have to have a dedicated team to make the convenience compilation. Do your housekeeping task, and then only will we listen. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I have a request, my lords. What, we are, what, is, have what has happened is that my lord, the victims, because we were there in the forefront, my lord, when the tragedy occurred, that is Bhopal Gas Spirit Mahila Udyog Sangathan and Bhopal Gas Spirit Sangash mm -hmm. Udyog Samiti. We were in the forefront, my lord. We came before this honorable court, even for distribution of food, interim leave to be given. Then we filed a review petition. It was on our review petition, my lord, the judgment came. Now, thereafter, my lord, we raised the question even before this curative petition that the, the compensation which has been given has to be increased, my lord, that SLP is pending here, which my lord, lordships are directed to be taken up after the constitution man decides. Now, my lord, in one case, my lord, set of victims, lordships have implemented them as parties, but we have not been implemented as no, a we party. Can't, we can't have this expanding motion now. No, my lord, the question is, my lord, this. No, I mean, it, it will have a bearing on the fairness of the... You, 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 no, no, no. Is that your, is your curative petition before us? No. I mean, yes, ma'am. Is your curative petition no. before us? No, I mean, not curative need not because it is filed you know, without parents. Let to collect everybody who is affected. No, I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's like this. No. May I just point out? Well, why, 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 why do you think the attorney is not capable of looking after... No, I mean, it is like this. <laughs> may I just point out? We will be committing a mistake not which we committed earlier. Because we not we were not heard, and then the settlement was arrived at. Now, now the question is, my lord, section four and three have been interpreted, my lord, in Charanlal Sahu, and what has been said is that ultimately we are necessary. My lord, the question is this precisely: a organization which has been taken up this issue, my lord, from the beginning, is not implemented. Organization how which comes you, up. From how do you implement hundred and thousand? You are one of. My lord, we, we are there. No, we are there in the beginning, my lord. We, it is our petition. Uh, my lords, on this issue, very briefly, our petition, my lord, in your My lords, very briefly, yes, uh, petitioners two to six, my lords, that where we are the victims, and orders have already been passed in 2011. 
my lords what they are saying there are seven organizations altogether that represent all the victims there are no other organizations so we my lords are for five organizations the impediment has happened we are now parties no, no. so my lords what they are saying by which order were you made parties in this by 13th for 2011 BCBA. my lords they are saying if i may just if i may just let finish then of course you have your chance. very specific yes in the curative petition my lords who is a party the in the curative petition i am a party okay. but it's been allowed and then it has been said that on maintainability and merits we will be heard we will not we will not permit i discussed we will not permit it like this we are not averse to hearing a point of view yes but we will not let parties be intervened like this this creates a unmanageable situation my lord so i have to say something on the basis of the record then previous before us we will we are not averse to listening to you no difficulty on that account my lords but we, very well on their on their I, point I, I, my lords our petition has already is already there as it has I been said so my lords if that can then be if we can be heard on the next occasion we have not, along with that to the air so whatever but may we I, are my lords has to my lords we are already petitioners i was only speaking may up may with may may not point my lords, i don't want to it's not a support place. actually because the question is my lord for the victims when we came know, initially, India, when Union of India had not filed Milord, even the review petition, we filed the review petition. We have been Milord. What happened ultimately, to your review petition? Yes, Milord. What happened to your review petition? My it? review partially petition was, allowed. that was allowed. And that's partially. how Milord, the judgment, yes, yeah, partially, the settlement, settlement which was there, Milord, on that settlement, Milord, the directions are given. And one of the directions is this, Milord. And that is where, it, which is Has important. Has your review petition worked yeah. itself out or not? Review after yes. review petition, my lord, we yes. moved an application. Yes, my lord. Sorry. Has it worked itself out or not? Will no, my lord. They, they are still absconding. Yes, my lord, they are criminal cases, and they are still proclaimed. One second. Lord, they are relying upon. You know, India is relying upon the directions which are given in our review petition, which was filed by us. Maybe. Maybe and one important fact. One important fact I must point out. Paragraph 197. What has been said is, we are my lord the incurative petition. The Union of India disputes that because they say, in case UCC is not able to pay, Milord, then Union of India will pay. Now, they ultimately, Milord, dispute that, that the finding which is given by majority is not correct. Now, we are not on that because ultimately it will be adjudicated. But I come in because it was in my review petition, a finding which has been given is being, Milord, questioned in this curative petition. So how do I, Milord, then come in? No, no, no. That's how I have come in here. You, you are satisfied with the orders passed on your review petition? That's right. No, Milord. We are not. What did you? What did you do? Did you? Yes, Milord. Yes, correct. What I did was. So did you file a curative petition? No, Milord. What I what I did was curative, Milord. Jurisdiction came subsequently. We filed, Milord, an IA. That IA, Milord, Lordship said you go before the adjudicating authority. We went before the adjudicating mm -hmm. authority. Then, Milord, High Court, Milord, may, may I just finish? High Court. And then ultimately SLP which is pending here on the same question after our SLP came that they filed a curative petition. That's how it has happened. So Milord, we have been pursuing, my Lord, the cause of victims from the very beginning. Yes. Yes. Now we, I leave it to your Lordship, my Lord. I don't want to say anything. I just want to, my Lord, I have prepared the entire thing which we did that we should be, my Lord, we should be heard because of this reason. Because if you are not implemented as a party, any direction which is given, because the direction ultimately has to be binding. Uh, and they said they are on our behalf. This petition has been filed by Union of India. They have said this is parents patria because under section three, my lord, the right has been given under section four. The organizations have been given, my lord, the act which was framed after, my lord, the, uh, the yeah, after the tragedy happened. Under four, my lord, we have been given a right to be represented. And what this court said that we committed a mistake in not hearing the victims. We though ultimately this was a, a, a little wrong, but. Uh, for a larger purpose, we are condoning it. Otherwise, it will be violated of principles of natural justice. In a larger sense, my lord, if you are not heard, then there will be, my lord, I, I repeat, my lord, it is the same kind of situation which happened then will be happening now. So, lord, I leave it, my lord, victims in lordship's hands to protect us and, my lord, deem, my lord, whatever is proper order should be passed. Uh, my submission is, you have, or, my lord, these are the organizations which are there. We are there from the beginning. Not will not come today. Said, yeah, Milord. Okay. Not come today. So if not, there are certain organizations so you that are already implemented uh, as parties. We should be implemented as parties. You represent five organizations. He represents how many? Two. Precisely, Milord. 
This is not a serious case, Pilot, right. where the party which files a review does not come in curative. The Union of India does not file the review but comes in curative. The curative is filed after 19 years of passing of the review judgment. And my lord, the criminal curative petition was dismissed by my lords because it was filed after about 17 years on, on account of delay. Similar curative petition on the same facts was dismissed by my lord, my lord on delay. My lord, greatest okay, respect. They, this is union carbide that is absconding. Yes, wait, wait. They are contrary right to you, you, they were right to be heard. Yes, Lord, yes, so if yes. I can, my lord, sir. Now, my lord, in the order dated, Lord, the first aspect about the impeachment of fellows, yes. these NGOs, 13th April 2012, my lord, sir, 211, 2011 order. The lordships have also never raised the question of the maintainability of these impeachment applications. If a lordship will, my lord, please see that order. It clearly says, my lord, the maintainability of the impeachment applications filed by the NGOs is an issue and has to be decided, my lord. Now, my lord, was that decided at any stage? No, no, no. The decision being decided, my lord. No. Now, what happened, my lord? Since, my lord. The matter was in circulation and the issue, uh, notice was issued, my lord, it said that for open hearing in the court. My lord, the registry has allowed them to be implemented, my lord, as co petitioners, my lord, though the Union of India only has filed the curative petition. My lord, curative is an extraordinary, my lord, revenue that your lordships evolved in 2002. Well, the reason why, my lord, these Sorry, NGOs cannot speak, my lord, an independent right for enhancement of the compensation, other than the lord, Union of India subject to the merits. Is my lord the provision of the Bhopal Gas Act, my lord, enacted by the Parliament, my lord, after the Treasury? The essence of the Lord Bhopal Gas Act is that the exclusive right has been given only to Union of India, my lords, not to the individual victims, not to the NGOs, my lords, or the organizations, but all claims in regard to the disaster, my lords, the exclusive right in regard to the damages to the person or the property or anything of the claim is with the Union of India. The constitutional validity was challenged in Charan Lal Sahu. Your lordships and the constitution bench have upheld the act and saying that it's only the Union of India. So, my lord, NGOs today, my lord, and what is happening is applications after applications are being filed, my lord, papers after papers, documents are being done. And now your lordships have a record of more than 5,000 pages. But lord, we have also filed an application, my lord, saying that these NGOs do not have, my lord, the right of impeachment because of the act also, because of the order, and they should not be. This is one aspect of the matter, my lord. On the last day, my lord, when the learned solicitor, my lord, said that he would like to take instructions. The matter indeed came up for my lord, directions, my lord, because the housekeeping has to be done, my lord, in this case. The voluminous records, the compilations have to be prepared. My lord, the lordship said in the, uh, my lord, the circulation that the councils have to indicate as to how much time. So our submissions have to be filed. Timeline has to be indicated. So my lord, all these things have to be done. Our problem today, my lord, is this. That even yesterday night, my lord, yesterday night, a bunch of papers have been filed by the NGOs, my lord, which is quite unnecessary. The contest is between the Union of India, my lord, and the UCC, my lord. The lordships may, if the Union of India wishes to go ahead, my lord, we can't say anything. But uh, he did the matter for housekeeping, my lord, give the directions, allow us. There are uh, as many as eight or nine IES, substantive IES filed by them, my lord, for seeking enhancement of compensation to us. How many crores? I don't know. Uh, 20, 30,000 crores. My lord, uh, 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 notice has not been issued, my lord, so we know those applications, my lord. If they have to be heard, then we have to give a response. So the lordships may decide the issue of the maintainability, my lords. Whether they can be co included as petitioners in the curative petition along with the Union of India. They are virtually, my lord, trying to become co plaintiffs. Just to add to that, my lord, first, before the NGOs come into the picture, your lordship will have to decide, my lord, whether the jurisdiction of purity was not there at the time of passing the curative uh, petition, whether the curative petition is at all maintainable, number one. Number two, the Union of India was, did not file a review. They were satisfied with the first judgment. Now, by skipping the review, whether they can file the curative. Number three, my lord, skipping 
the delay of 19 years after passing of the review judgment. 19 years. 91 was the review judgment. Union of India filed the curative in 2010. was the review judgment. Thereafter, we not, as I said, we not curative press. Criminal curative has been dismissed. And there are so many other, we not maintainability issues of the Union of India's curative petition itself. Your Lordship may be pleased to decide that first before coming into the issue of the NGO. In my respectful submission, enough material to will not dismiss the curative. One thing will not be which I forgot to mention is this one. In 1999, it was a court negotiated settlement by a constitution bench. 470 million US dollars which translated into 3,000 more thousand, 3,000 crores. 1991, the Lord said, a view was entertained by a constitution bench, the Lord presided over by his Lordship, the Lord Justice Secretary the Lord said, hearing went on for 88 days, and there were only two issues, the Lord. One was the adequacy of the settlement amount, 470 million dollars, and the second, the Lord, where the criminal proceedings were part. The constitution bench, the Lord, in the review petition decided and the second that this aspect of the adequacy of the compensation cannot be reopened, it is adequate. If there is any deficiency, may not in future, Union of India will meet it. However, may not the criminal proceeding question was because reviewed, and may not the criminal proceedings were restored. An attempt was made in 2007, again may not for enhancement of the compensation by filing IAS by the NGOs. May not the bench of this court, may not said, after obtaining the affidavit of the Union of India, we say no need for enhancement. Welfare Commissioner, who is a presiding judge, may not say no need for enhancement. Dismiss that, my lord, a substantive assault. Mr. Judge Shanti, thank you. That there is no, the settlement amount is adequate. As a matter of fact, my lord, I must tell you, Lordship, out of the whole corpus of 3,000 crores, the settlement commissioner could distribute only 1,500 crores, my lord, to the eligible claimants. Because there was just a law frame, the Lord, for award of the compensation. Fifteen hundred crores was in surplus. This law, the Lord, this court in extraordinary jurisdiction directed that this surplus amount be also distributed on a pro rata basis to victims. So they have been paid compensation twice over, the Lord. And still the amount is surplus. The latest figures in 2022 is that the amount with the RBI is still lying there, the Lord, and is surplus. And dollar amount. Dollar amount. I'm not the issue will really be into supplement what my friends is saying. The Lordship, when you frame the rules, say very specifically in the rules in chapter 47, Lord, you say that a curative petition shall be accompanied. Uh, by circuit to the effect that it is the first curative petition. So now the first curative petition, whatever its merit has been filed, we will we will have to argue it in our own turn on its maintainability. In effect, without filing a curative, the NGOs who lost out in the judgment reported, as my learned friend says in 2007, 109, SCC 707, now seek to ride on the wings of the union and come through a back door and then agitate their claims. Now that can't be done. And please see the order of 2011. There is, I'm sorry to say, it is an incorrect statement to make that their application for impeachment were allowed. A revised order came to be passed on the same day. The revised order made it very clear that maintainability has to be uh, uh, considered in those matters. And that revised order is part of the record. My learned friends cannot say they were impeached. That's not correct. So the registry has inadvertently done something. My lords, if I may briefly. Please see the revised order. This point, this point, by beginning with the order. Beginning with the order, I'll read it out. It says, I, I didn't interrupt, so if I may have just a couple of minutes. Interlocutory application number 729, these are mine, are allowed subject to service. Union Subsequent to that, it says, issue notice on the maintainability of the interlocutory application and merits of the matter. Because so, my lords, the hearing that happened then, and uh, in fact, the, in a lighter note, uh, the Chief Justice was representing us in the criminal curative petition. You, they were right to be heard. Um, our interlocutory applications were allowed. And what was said was that subject to maintainability and merits of the matter. 
because it was recognized, my lords, that these are inextricable. My respectful submission, my lords, enough material to will not dismiss the queue. We had filed an application for impeachment. We had filed an application for impeachment. Pursuant to the right given in Charan Lal's right, which is a five judgment. In Charan Lal's, they had looked at the Bhopal gas case. They had looked at the Bhopal gas case, and they had said that, look, we can't make up for the fact. I mean, we can't unravel the settlement to the extent that you weren't heard prior. So now that's all done as water under the bridge. But now you must be heard. And what it says, and I quote, in order to make the opportunity contemplated by Section 4 of the Act meaningful and effective, it should be so read that the victims have to be given an opportunity of making their representation before the court comes to any conclusion. In addition, Section 4 says, the central government shall have due regard to any matters which such person may be required to be urged. Now that the learned uh, Attorney General has made such a heartening statement, we are deeply hopeful that they will have due regard to the our pleadings as petitioners two to six. But my lords, regardless, we have our claims before the court. My lords, there are two aspects of the review, as my uh, one of my friends very fairly pointed out. They said that, and this might narrow the issues a little bit. They said that there is the civil aspect, which is the $470 million. And then there is the criminal aspect, which was initially quashed. And then their counsel invited the jurisdiction of this court explicitly. Under Article 142, citing the Sancheta set of judgments, in order to say, please support, please continue the withdrawal slash washing of the cases. This court considered that issue and they and said that, no, look, we can't, we are not doing this on the basis of public policy. We are saying because in this case, I mean, we can't, the matter must be investigated. Not in any regard did they say that this is without prejudice to the argument that they are not submitting to the jurisdiction of their court. And yet, the next day, Union Carbide said to their counsel, having documents on record, Union Carbide said that uh, to their counsel that this court has no jurisdiction over us with regard to the criminal cases. Four months later, and um, we have that on record, the criminal court concerned, the jurisdictional criminal court, declared them a proclaimed offender under Section 82. To this day, they are absconding. It is reported in the final judgment against UCIL. And so with regard to the second part, my lords, there's no more delicate way to put it. We believe that they have played a fraud on the court. There was a order that was placed after that with regard to attachment. My lords, of their properties, what they did, and this, these are not my words, these are the words of a, a district court in Connecticut, a federal judge in Connecticut, their country, said that the admitted facts are that after the Bhopal gas disaster, they set up a web of intermediaries in order to bring their goods into the country. My lords, with regard to the settlement itself in 2009 and 10, through the process of um, RTI, but also the US discovery process, which is quite rigorous. And they're on pain of criminal penalties, documents can't be suppressed, etc. Documents were discovered showing that they had a internal report which says that methylisocyanate once inhaled only causes permanent injury if you have been in it for, say, a few hours. They had proposed, and this is the, the setting, the basis of the settlement is a top secret document. And I quote, it says top secret right on top. With the government at the time, which proposed categories of temporary injury and permanent injury, and over 98% of the claimants have got under temporary injury on average of 25,000 rupees, whereas they knew 
that the injury is most likely in all cases to be permanent, and that was suppressed. How are we arguing suppression? And this all we will place, Malam. We are saying that they suppressed it on the basis that they told the elect uh, the I beg your pardon, the Environmental Protection Agency that this is a trade secret. We are required by law to give you these documents. Please do not disclose them further. But the Environmental Protection Agency decided otherwise. So my notes, a recent 22 judgment, but all the way down from Chengal where as the notes are aware, fraud must unravel the judgment, cannot sustain. And my notes will explain that 2004, um, not 2002, 2004, the curative jurisdiction arose and why we are coming in 2010. And I'll take only two minutes. I'll not take a lot because I already said a lot. Number one is not saying NGOs may not be correct because we are representing the victims not from the very beginning. And our locus has been accepted by virtue of the fact that it is or it, it was on our review petition, will not that the constitution bench gave the judgment, wherein will not they considered even Charlan and Sahu interpreting will not the provisions of the act. Now, while interpreting the provisions of the act under section four, he says that Union of India will file on behalf, but four is an exception to it. Four says that the victims will be heard through their counsel, etc. They will they have a right to be heard without in whenever the settlement, etc. Because now the settlement is being reopened. Therefore, it is necessary not by virtue of the enactment and the two judgments which have been given that the persons who are there, I'm not talking not we are not people who have come just like that. Not, we are there from the beginning. I have prepared a dates without and all the uh, uh, proceedings in which we intervene, as far as we are concerned, Milad, from the very beginning. So, Milad, we are not, I am not going to the merits part of it. I am saying, Milad, it is necessary that we should be implied and heard in the interest of justice, so that, Milad, it will not be that the victims are not heard. The settlement took place, and at this juncture, when it is very, very necessary, the victims, Milad, because we will be able to assist this honorable court, Milad, to a very great extent in arriving at, Milad, the just kind of a uh, Disposal of the matter. But may I, no, may I only, no, only one thing? We have. See, what is happening sorry, is, Mr. Yeah. It's it's uh, you argue in the beginning, you argue in the end, then you argue something else. This can't go on like this. Mr. this Mr. Is exactly what I will, we will not permit in the proceedings uh, which will take place. Yes, Mr. Mr. I, 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 I was finishing it. You I have to have a discipline proceedings. It can't be like this that today we have a little time. So you are going here, there, somebody is coming in, somebody is going out. It can't go like this. No. But the last thing is that the specially petition which we filed. I just pass on the order. That may also be tagged with this. Uh, we thing. are not here to tag. So we are giving the charity. May I not be not the order which was passed in the TP which was a corrected matter when the agreement was declined. So then, and may I just pass the order that this TP is can you pass so May may I only have a few minutes of the lot. We will we will you will have the last say. <laughs> you had the first say. You will have. The last say. <laughs> I know. I'm also. I I also want to gather all the thoughts. But <laughs> <laughs> so this is an order. But there is a petition pending in the High Court. The union has filed a transfer petition to get the writ petition brought here. This is an order in the transfer petition, which is connected to this batch of matters. This is the last in today's slot. And kindly note, heard learned counsel for the applicants and learned senior counsel for respondents, applicants, Bhopal Group for Information and Action will be heard before any orders are passed in PP, but will not be added as a respondent. That is the order passed in the connected matter. That PP is also listed in today's cause list. That's uh, 502. 502. 502 block. We have no section. 502 block. No, no, no. You have had your say. But so what I'm saying is today the fact is two four day. On the one hand, no curated by them. On the other hand, the rules say the first thing. I'm understood. That's all. I, I, I'm not going to repeat. Yes, certainly. No, I, I didn't. Uh, it's entirely the discretion of the court as to who shall be heard. But today, after several stages, so the initial stage, of course, everybody had a right to be heard. There were several concerns, several ways of, you know, presenting perspectives in this matter. And speaking for myself, we're all gone through this. I had an opportunity of assisting Professor Bakshi in the early stages of litigation. We have gone through representing victims on the one side and also government on the other side. I have fairly a good view of the you know, unfolding uh, dimensions of the case. So at the early stage, everybody heard. I don't want to be heard today saying stifling everybody's right to be heard. I don't think like that. Stage where the only question for the parents of Patrick concern is either either adequacy of compensation to be you know to be revisited. If on that question, if lots of thing, everybody need to go, it is an entirely different matter. 
But if it's a matter entirely between the court and, and the Union of India and what parameters we can reopen it and then how and then what parameters the adequacy of the compensation can be re revisited is a matter I thought is where the, the Union of India may have to assist the court in a large measure. See, um, they have flagged two issues. One, <coughs> the fact that you never filed a review petition and you came in a curative petition after 19 years. What is the ramification? Let me examine. They have never filed a curative petition. Filed a review petition, which was disposed of. Sure. Correct. Now, what is the capacity in which they are to be heard? These are two, apart from any other issue, this will be issues which will arise. Nani, Attorney General has taken a stand before us that the government would like to press its security petition. Good stuff. Um, a number of NGOs seek to be added as parties before us. Good stuff. On the other hand, the respondents say, say that very maintainability of the curative petition would have to be examined as it comes 19 years after the judgment was passed and without going through a process of a review application. Good stuff. The person who filed the review applications on which orders were passed have not filed a curative petition. And the constructors of the first set, we issue the following directions. First, the government would represent the claim of the person who have suffered and thus a compilation would be required to be prepared by the office of the attorney general and the respondents which would be the compilation alone to be referred oh, that's by the us second in the proceeding. Second January. Uh, number two, in so far as the applicants association are concerned, Mama, we do not give any liberty to file any pleadings, but at the relevant stage, we will see to what extent assistance can be given by the council, and we do not foreclose their right to be heard by us at our discretion. Uh, next. 
the joint compilation. We prepare it within how much time will both of you prepare this? We need at least about four to six weeks to prepare the comments. So the additional material may have to be scanned and then no, no, what properly. You say now. See, attorney, you know. I, I, I quite see that. We, do, we don't. Six I, weeks is seven into six, 42 days. <laughs> so let's be clear on the days. So you yes. want it now, six weeks, whatever. Eight, eight, eight weeks. Not, so we are not eight weeks. But eight weeks will mean uh, seven eight are fifty six. Yes. Yes. Uh, right. Within eight weeks, as straight for in brackets, fifty six days. But it's close. Timeline has to be adhered to. Absolutely. Any, uh, deviation. No. 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 No compromises on that. <laughs> uh, now thereafter, you will also have to file your uh, submission, synopsis or submissions. Yes. And the parties will also file. A brief synopsis. How many pages each? Five pages. Little. For so me, maybe a little more. Longer than that. Make it little more. Ten pages. See, we have to learn to. No, I know. To but time limits, we have to learn to adhere to ten pages. Yes. Otherwise, it becomes an indefinite, cumbersome process. My lord, if I may have a last. You can't interrupt in between. Sorry. Ten pages. Ten, ten, ten pages. pages would be sufficient. Dates. Okay. Yeah. No, dates are different. Submissions are different. Not different things. Not, not keeping in the number of facts, not they, they may take 10, 10 pages. I, okay. within 10 pages. In 10 pages, as straight. I know. <laughs> Very. Uh, we will keep it once for yeah. housekeeping so that yeah. we are sure that everything is ready. Then only we'll list it. Still yes. we want to put a time for listing. So we'll assemble to see whether you've done what is required to be done. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. So, Eight weeks. Uh, synopsis will be simultaneously filed, or how do you want that? Uh, no, we may file it a little thereafter after the compilation gets ready because we may have to do within, some within, within two weeks thereafter. Yes, yes within two weeks. So we may two also two need to file some additional documents, materials as part of a compilation. Yeah, yeah, be no, like, to, uh, to, 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 you're not having a fresh petition to be. No, 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 no. It to present the present the curative in it. No, no, certainly, I understand the limitation to the curative hearing, but then to update what is the current uh, data and analysis of this. So we need to appraise your lawyers of what is the current position. It's very important side of making. Will be in two weeks thereafter. Yes. Yes. Then attorney says that with the compilation, I thought you will file a joint compilation. Yes, what we, I wanted you. But we nominate one of our colleagues who will sit with the attorney's colleague and make a joint compilation. Attorney says that some documents may be permitted to be filed on record limited to the updated position uh, or at the ground level. Nothing more than that. My lords, may I have my lords very, very brief indulgence on the implication? Not after the order is passed. My lords. <laughs> We've heard, we, so we heard everybody at leisure. I, I, my lords, this leisure. point has not so After having done so, sometimes some order goes in favor of somebody, sometimes it's a more restricted order. Having passed that, you have to accept it. There's no re persuasion on that. My lords, we, my we lords. Take, we, we have given you a halfway house. We are, quite, we are quite conscious of it. But that's what you get. My lords, just on this claim, they are only asking for a refund, the union. So the anguish of the Bhopal victims will not be alleviated, my lords. Um, our sorry. claim is different, which sorry. is why it, the order was sorry. passed in our favor sorry. in 2011, my lords. No, I am not uh, saying anything about the order. Not. I am only requesting. Whether we can put me on two pages of our no, points. No. no. We, we will hear you on it. Right. Be rest assured when we give you a right. hearing, we will. I need to be be sir, you can argue on the basis of what is filed by the AG's office. Yes. So you can collect it from the AG's office. There is no difficulty. Of course. Thank our you. office is all in open training. <laughs> No, this will put us in grave difficulty, but we hope that the union will have due regard under the act to our claims because they are just asking for a refund, right? The so second January it will reopen. Second would be a Monday. Second will reopen. Yeah, I have to pass. 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 Yeah, I have to pass.
फर्स्ट जनवरी संडे सेकेंड वीक में सेकेंड एंड नाइन टेन इलेवन को लगा सकते हैं लगा दी ट्यूजडे